Okay, Organic Chemistry 2330. We're going to talk about Chapter 14 today, the functional derivatives of carboxylic acids. In Chapter 13, we learned about what carboxylic acids were and a couple of the different functional ways, the groups they had, including the acid chloride. However, in this chapter, we're going to talk about all the different types of carboxylic acid derivatives and how to interconvert them between each other. Okay, so the general types of derivatives we have available to us are basically just changing out what's attached to the carbonyl on the carboxylic acid. So in the case of our first derivative here, we've talked about this, we talked about it called the acid chloride. We've replaced the OH on the carboxylic acid with the chlorine. And if you think about it, if we removed water from HCl and this carboxylic acid, we generate the acid chloride and remove water, okay? If we do the same thing with two equivalents of a carboxylic acid and remove an equivalent of water here, we end up with what we call an acid anhydride. So you take a carboxylic acid, remove one equivalent of water, and you end up with the acid anhydride. If you take the carboxylic acid and an alcohol and remove water, you end up with an ester. And then in this last one, if you take a carboxylic acid and an amine with a, a hydrogen on it, you can remove water and generate an anion. So the four functional groups we're gonna talk about are the acid chloride, the acid anhydride, the ester, and the anion. Okay, so let's talk about acid chlorides first. Acid chlorides are very uh, interesting to use and most commonly we use chlorine because the chlorine uh, carbonyl bond tends to be the most stable and most easily used, okay? When we do that, we take the carboxylic acid name, we drop off the ic acid and add il chloride. So if we had ethanoic acid or acetic acid, we would call it ethanoyl chloride or acetyl chloride. If we had benzoic acid, we drop the ic acid and add il chloride so that we can benzoic acid becomes benzoyl chloride, okay? So the naming is pretty um, easy. We just change the ic acid to il chloride, okay? With anhydrides, acid anhydrides, what we've done is we've removed that. Typically, if they're symmetrical, we just name it for what the carboxylic acid was before we did the dehydration. So in the case of acetic acid, we call it acetic anhydride. In the case of mal uh, maleic acid, which actually is a diacid compound, if we just dehydrate it, we call it maleic anhydride. If we have an unsymmetrical anhydride, and like in the case of the acetic benzoic anhydride, we have to name each of the carboxylic acids individually and in alphabetical order. Okay. Uh, this acid and hydride functionality can also be found in phosphoric acid. This is an inorganic acid. And we'll learn a lot more about this if you take the follow on introduction to biochemistry course. Okay. The next group I want to talk about is the ester functionality. And it's basically taking a carboxylic acid and an alcohol and therefore binding together. So because we're doing that, we have to name the alcohol first, and then we name the benzoic acid group second, but we drop the ic acid and add A-A-T-E as an eight, as a denoting that it is the ester. So in the case of this first compound here, we have ethanol is what the alcohol we used, and we had acetic acid, so we have to name the ethyl group for the ethanol. So we say ethyl, and then acetic acid is acetate in the common name, but it's ethanoic acid in its uh, IUPAC name. So there we label it ethanoate, ethanoic acid. You drop the ic acid, so it's ethanoate, okay? So if we had a symmetrical version, if we had this uh, butane uh, dione, we name it for that, and since we have the same group on both sides, we're gonna say diethyl butanodioate, butane dioate, because we have to denote it's a dicarboxylic uh, acid. But remember, those dicarboxylic acid have common names, and the uh, butan butane dioic acid is succinic acid. Therefore, when we name it as a common name, we name both of the, S the alcohol groups, which is ethyl, and then its common name, succinate. The A-N-T 
indicates that it is an, an ester. Oops. All right. Now, one interesting little derivative there is if we make an ester into a ring, we call that a lactone. And if you can think about it, it looks like a ketone with an alcohol uh, bound in it. We call these lactones. And in that case, we drop the ic acid and add the word lactone. So we have one, two, three, four carbons. So that would be uh, butanoic acid. And, but because we formed it into this ring, we have it butanolactone. Now, they also have common names. The common names use Greek letters. So if you see a Greek letter, you're looking at a common name. And instead of numbering like we would with IUPAC numbers, where we have the one starting at the carbonyl, that when we have the Greek letters, they start at one carbon over. So the one carbon over is the alpha, beta, and then the gamma. So this would be gamma lactone, signifying it has three carbons that are not the carbonyl in that chain. Now we would continue that if it got bigger and bigger to um, the delta, epsilon, et cetera. Okay. So we can see these same kind of ester formations happen with phosphoric acid. There's a lot of biological substrate that use these phosphonate esters or phosphoric acids in esters in our system. And they will be, again, looked at extensively in a follow-on course uh, with the introduction to biochemistry. Okay. The last functional group we're going to talk about is called amides. And that's where we take that OH off and add a nitrogen carbonyl bond. And that means that we have to start looking at how many hydrogens are on that nitrogen. If we have uh, just one carbon bond on that nitrogen, we call that a primary amide because there's only one carbon bond. If we have a carbonyl on that nitrogen plus another carbon bond, we have to call that a secondary amide. And if we have three different carbon bonded to that nitrogen and one of them's a carbonyl, we call that a tertiary amide. If none of them are carbonyls, that's just an amine. So we need to pay, pay attention to that. So when we name these, we drop the ic acid from the system and just add the word amide. So for, for acetic acid, it would be acetamide. For uh, formic acid, it'd be formid. So if we look at here, formamide here, uh, and then we would, if there's something on the nitrogen, we have to name it on the nitrogen, and we have to denote that it is on the nitrogen by having that uh, N there. So we're saying N is that it's bonded to the nitrogen. What group is bonded to the nitrogen? That's a methyl group. So it's N-methyl, and now we name the carboxylic acid, N-methyl acetamide, okay? Now, in the case, if you have two different groups added, you have to say that both of those groups are bonded to the same nitrogen. So you have N comma N dash. Then you have two methyl groups, so it's dimethyl formamide. Okay. So it's a simple method, um, method of adding different carbons to your amide. Okay, just like in the fact that we can have cyclic uh, esters, we can also have cyclic amides. Instead of being lactones, we call them lactams. So like uh, we can do the naming is very similar. For IUPAC, we drop the ic acid and add the word lactam. For common, we add a Greek letter to them. So in the case of this first one right here, uh, we have one, two, three, four carbons total right here, but we have, because the carbonyl starts our numbering system, we count that as one. This becomes three because our nitrogen is bonded to our three carbon here. Uh, butane, buto, butano, lactam, butano, lactam. So it'd be butanoic acid, but it's in a, a cyclic amide, so we call it lactam, butano, lactam. Now in this case here, again, a Greek letter start at one carbon over from the carbonyl, so that would be alpha, beta. So this would be called beta, lactam. As that ring gets bigger and bigger, we have to go higher and higher in the Greek numbers. And so if we were to name this as our UPEC name, we have a total of six carbons in the ring, which means it was hexanoic acid. So we have six hexanolactam because we're adding that lactam because it's that cyclic amide. But in a common name, we have to go with the Greek letters, go alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon. So this becomes epsilon lactam. 
Okay, so when we looked at the carboxylic acids and uh, we noticed that we could displace um, that with nucleophiles, remember when we had ketones and aldehydes, we did additions to those because carbon and hydrogen were poor leaving groups. In the case of these carboxylic acids, we have much better leaving groups. So we, instead of just doing an addition reaction, like with the aldehydes and ketones, we are actually gonna do a substitution reaction and remove the, whatever the Y group is. In like the case of the most reactive, the, the acid halide, we have chloride leaving as an ion. So unlike aldehydes and ketones, where we get addition products, in most of these carboxylic acid derivatives, we get substitution products. Okay, so to look at how they're going to substitute and which groups are going to substitute which, we have to look at how good the leaving group is. So the chloride ion is a much better leaving group than the acetate ion. The acetate ion is a better leaving group than the alkoxide or, uh, or deprotonated alcohol. And the deprotonated alcohol is better leaving group than that deprotonated amine. The whole reason it is, is because the basicity is increasing as we go, which means the conjugate acid of the other material is higher. So we have to think about that as a, the more acidic, the more basic something is, the poorer the leaving group is, the more acidic it is, the better the leaving group is, okay? So we'll see that when we have acid halides and water will leave much earlier than the alkoxides or the amines. Okay, so what does that mean for our actual functional groups we have? What that means is that our acid halide, because it's gonna have the chloride leaving as the leaving group, is the most reactive toward nucleophilic substitution. The anhydride would be the next because it would have a carboxylic acid anion as the leaving group. The ester would have the alkoxide as the leaving group and the amide would have the amine as the leaving group. So in order of reactivity, we have acid halide first, anhydride second, ester third, and amide fourth. Now that level of reactivity is how we're gonna justify how we're gonna do which reactions on which of these substrates to interconvert between all of these different functional groups.